Stay tuned. G4TV.com. Next. So we're so excited to have co-hosting with us today, video game music composer, winner of more than 20 awards for best oh. game soundtrack, oh. and... The Dark Side of Judgment Day, Mr. Tommy Tallarico. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank and you know what? I really love the name Tommy Tallarico. Oh. It's so cool. It's like a tough guy name. You're like, hey, I'm Tommy, Tommy Tallarico. Yeah, it kind of has a nice ring to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it totally does. Like, yo, yo, you don't miss the Tommy Tallarico. Hey, yeah, Tallarico, hey. you're going to rumble tonight. Hey, yo. Oh, Actually, it's a good yeah. name for like a pizza joint. Like, hey, Tommy, I need three more pops. Tommy Tallarico, Tommy. 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 Uh, if you don't stop, I'm going to kick your ass, all right? Really? Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm so drawn to you right now. Really? And I to you. Welcome to G4 TV. Tina, my love, how have you been all week? What's been going on? It's just been great. It's yeah? Just, yeah, I've been playing a few video games. Got any plans for the weekend? Yeah. Yeah, not going to share them with yeah. you. Yeah. All right, well, I'm heading off to New York because I'm you know how I love New York. My house, though. And speaking of, you know, this, so joining us this week is one of the nuttiest men in gaming. He is the nut between our berries, <laughs> Mr. Tommy Tallarico. <laughs> the hell does nice. that mean? I don't know, but I, don't I know. like that. Thanks I, for I the just kiss, say by stuff. the way. I just say stuff. I've been oh, meaning no, to do you. that for about two and a half years yeah. now, so. Call me. Yeah, get, yeah. <laughs> we'll get together. Speaking of calling. You're next. Okay, great. Yeah, let's take a call. Just for fun. We'll make out later. Oh, yeah? Hey, what's your name? Oh, Jay. Jay, where are you calling from? Uh, L.A. L.A., what do you want to talk about? Uh, I was calling about Fable and how uh, you could play both good and evil, and I was just wondering, since uh, Laura played it, which was more fun to play good or evil? Yeah, well, I did play it, actually. I spent a little yeah. time with it this past week. What um, side do you think Laura played as? <laughs> I, I'm saying evil. Yes. But listen, guys, let me tell you something. Yeah. It was so hard for me to play evil. Like, I played... Yeah. I normally, my intentions would be the, be good, but I played evil, and I couldn't even think of as many evil things to do as this game wanted me to do. Like, That's my right. friends were coming yeah. in over, coming over and telling me to do this other extra evil thing. In my mind, it doesn't even go that way. That's how good this game is. Yeah, this game's great. We had a chance to play it as well. I played a little bit of the, of the good side. But the thing is, you don't really choose, like, good or evil at the beginning. It's like, it's a lot like life. When you actually make choices as you grow older and, of you know, and you want a chance to play it as well. Well, that's the thing. It's, it's kind of like, do you want to be Victor Lucas or Tommy Tellerico? Right. It's good and evil, right? And <laughs> no, But the thing about this game is I think you'll see a lot of these games, newer games, you know, it, it, it's it's drawing you in. It's giving you a connection oh, okay. to the character, you know, and, and putting you in this environment that, that you can do anything you want. And to me, that's cool. That's interactive that's entertainment. Now, Carl, are you a big fan of RPGs? Uh... Not so much, not the Japanese RPGs, more of uh, American RPGs like Fallout and stuff. Well, let me so, tell you, like, I don't know, I personally never really have been grabbed by one. Yeah. But this one, <laughs> I just think was awesome, and I suggest you go out and try because it totally held my attention. There's so many fun things about the game. Like, yeah. it's, first of all, it's a funny game. It yeah. is funny. Wait, it's an emotional game, and I think Peter Molly does a really good job of drawing you in emotionally to your to your, your main character, where you truly sympathize with him, and you really want to see evil, him. Unless he's evil, then you just hate <laughs> him. Then you hate him. Right, yeah. But you do, I think you really, I, I was rooting for him, unlike right. a lot of characters that you just... They don't draw you in as much as I think this game does. Hey, caller. Hey. Hey, what's your name? Tim Donnelly. Tim, where are you calling from? New Hampshire. New Hampshire, what would you like to talk about? Um, first, I'd just like to say I like all three of your shows really much. Oh, thanks. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Who would you like better? <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on. Yeah, what would you like to talk about? Um, I'd like to talk about the recent bankruptcy of Acclaim. Mm. Yes, Acclaim, A.K.A. Lame. Yeah. No, no. Acclaim. You know, I'm, you know what it was about Acclaim is that it seemed like, and they've been around a long time. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But they never really had that. They never had that Grand Theft Auto, right. that Zelda, that you know. It was. They were the always athlete, like. Yeah. They were well, always we, like. I mean, they had Turok, which was kind of good. Turok, but the third one sucks. Well, we we be, had Burnout Three. Ugh. Sorry, what were you saying, caller? Um. Well, they actually did do some pretty good stuff. Like they they pr they produced um Super Smash. I mean um Smash TV and Mortal Kombat. Again, you know, I mean, you hate to see any video game publisher go under, but you know, it, it's it's kind of a lesson in mediocrity. You know, I mean, you right. really need this industry is built on hits, similar to the music industry. Right, you know? right. absolutely. And they just never really had that one big hit. They never at had least their not Tomb Raider, recently. You know? Not it's recently. Like, yeah. Were you a big Acclaim fan? Um, I love to hate them. <laughs> I love to hate them. Okay, well, fair enough, then. Right. It, it, it's just like it happened My back bad. in Atari. Atari was the only company that was making video games for a long time. As far right. as then it began to get mainstream, and everybody started to join and jump on a bandwagon. Well, eventually, yeah. Atari, other companies begin to go under because there's not enough room for everybody. Everybody can't make a bazillion dollars. There's not that many bazillion dollars to oh, go around. Okay, good point, Tina. But you know what? You guys at home, keep your ass right where it is, because later on the show, we're going to show the game that I thought was one of the best at E3. You know what it is? You don't say anything. But, but you're not right. There's not enough room for everybody.
Hey, you guys, we are about to rock this party, but joining Tina and I is video games' very own rock star, the hottie Tommy yeah. Tallarico. The hottie Tommy hey, Tallarico. There he is. Get off my man, I kill you. <laughs> hey, but Tina, Tina, when your friends say to you, you? Yeah. When's the new G4TV.com's premiere? What do I you say, say? I say Wednesdays, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. That's and right, Tina. Yeah. Wednesdays, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. Now you know where to go. Check it out, definitely. But Tina, in the meantime, let's take a call. Hey, caller. Hey. Hey, what's your name? Jason. Jason, where are you calling from? Gate City, Virginia. All right, what you calling about? Well, since you guys were just talking about rock stars, have you guys heard anything about the new GTA game? Yes, we have. Oh, All right. Hey. Been keeping tabs, yeah. actually. Tommy, why don't you take is, this one? It, was, it is unbelievable. Grand Theft Auto has taken it to a new level. I mean, th this time around, you can actually, it, it puts you so much into the world. You can actually, like, you know, you have to get your hair cut or else it'll grow too long. If you don't work out, you actually start to become fat. Which I was just saying, I was like, in a video game, it's like the one place you don't have to worry about your weight and everything. No, <laughs> so but it's like, like Grand Theft Auto that. meets The Sims. I'm telling you, yeah. Rockstar yeah. is the, the mastermind of, like, genre blending. Yeah. There's Vegas, San Francisco. Los Angeles. LA. Yeah, the yeah. environment, I think, is it says uh, five times larger than it was in Vice City. And uh, robbery, apparently, is like the big yeah, difference in this game is that you get to go steal from everybody that you know you that you don't know. You're breaking the houses, right. man. And they're taking it to the hood, yo. That's yeah. right. Taking it thug style, now, you know. Are you, are you a Grand Theft Auto fan? Hey, what? Jason, are you a Grand Theft Auto fan? Yes, I am. So what are you most looking forward to in San Andreas? Uh, definitely having to keep it, keep everything up. You know, like Tommy said, the haircut and the food and the working out. That's going to be a little bit of a work. It's going to be a lot like The Sims, I guess. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, and I'm going to ask Tommy as well. With their predecessors, you know, 3 and Vice City, huge, huge, like, landmark games, do you think San Andreas is going to be able to hold up the caliber and raise the bar even further? I, I think with this game, their approach that they're taking, I really do think that, you know, it's going to have more fans, and I think this game's going to sell more units than the previous two. Yeah, really and not mean. just based yeah. on the franchise name. I think it's really going to top it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at the See graphics, that? too. Yeah, yeah. Even the graphics are a lot better. They've, they spent a lot of time on the animations and the fighting system this time around yeah, to make no, it more fun. I think it's going to do well. I don't think it's going to do as well. Only the fact I think there's so many great games coming out that yeah, I don't but think you're people wrong. have so you much money. To... You think a lot of weird things. <laughs> hey, Carla, let me ask you something. What do you think? Well, I think well, I think it'll just do just fine. It probably will top GTA Vice City, but I don't know about Top and Grand Theft Auto 3 and stuff since the fall. All right, well, you'll basically, learn. Basically, he agrees learn. with me. You'll learn. That's right, Jason. Right, yeah. we'll hang You're right. Thank you for calling. Appreciate it. Let's hey. take one more. I think. Hey, caller. Hello. Hey, what's your name? Uh, this is Ray, a.k.a. King Kong Sushi. King Kong, King Kong Sushi, sushi on, on the that, boards. Hey, what you calling about, King Kong Sushi? Uh, I'd like to ask Tommy a question. Well, he's okay. right in front of me. All right. Um, who or what inspired you to become a video game music producer? Uh, who inspired me? Well, I, I've been playing. <laughs> I, oh, 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 well, there's the girls, of course. <laughs> no, the um, I, I just I always wanted to do music. I mean, I, I you know my whole life, you know, I listened to people like John Williams and and Beethoven growing up, and I never thought I'd actually put the two together um, until I came out here and, and met a met a uh, video game producer the third day I was in California. Wow. How did that happen? How did you yeah. blend your video game love with your music love? It was crazy. I, I came out here when I was 21, didn't have a place to stay, just no last money, year. nothing. I was just sleeping on the beach and uh, under the pier at Huntington Beach. Is that true? And uh, Yeah, and I, and I got a That's job so hot, at... That's so Uh-oh. <laughs> and uh, I got a job at Guitar Center and the first... I was wearing a Turbo Graphics t-shirt. I get all my pics from the Guitar Center, by the way. You see? And the <laughs> The first person who walked in was a, a games producer, and he saw my Turbo Graphics T-shirt. Right. We struck a conversation, and I started in the test department the next wow. day. So a great way to get in the industry is working your way up the ladder, like in any you know industry. Totally. So you know, starting on the bottom and working your way up. If anybody's interested in getting in music, they should go to www.audiogang. Dot org, right. which is a nonprofit organization I started a couple years ago. We have tons of men, like every video game guy uh, and gal in, right. in the world. Is, is that your new site? No, no, that my new site. Your that's Tellerico.com. Tellerico.com. Yeah. Tellerico. Yeah. Tellerico. So King Kong Sushi, if you want to know more about Tommy, head to Tellerico. Or if you want to know about yeah, their actually, relationship, it's, it's go to TellericoandLaura.com. <laughs> Please tell me later. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate it. Okay, you guys, we got to take a break. But, you know, speaking of guys, at the end of the show, <gasps> the three of us are going to play a little of the guy game. Really? Yeah. This new trivia game directed at men because, you know, they show boobs. Lots of boobs. But, therefore, Ooh. one of us might be showing some boobs. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Really? This is a new one kind of, of show today. <laughs> Taking it to the next level. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to G4 TV. And you know what? If you think Tina and I are opinionated, 
then you haven't met our special host for the week. Screw the Tommy Knockers. It's Tommy 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 Rico. Tommy Rico. Yeah. Yay. In the lot. house. In the house. There you go. Hey, hey. Okay. All right, well, let me tell you, Tina. Yes. Adding sexy and Italian to the title of this next bit would be the only way to make it describe Tommy any better. Aww. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the segment that has been named after the man about to do it, it's time for Twisted and Sweet, presented by Juicy Seafood. I'm Tristan. Okay, the game I, I chose yes. is... One of my favorite game franchises of all time, Gallop Racer. Okay. I mean, okay, but you're okay, like, okay. okay. No, but Gallop Racer <laughs> 2004. <laughs> this is an amazing game. I mean, it has so many RPG elements. It's it's crazy. It's you have to, you know, in in this year's version, you really have to, you know, build up your horse and build up your, you know, and, and horses can can make love. Get out of yeah. here. Yeah. There's like me and Laura making love. Now, those, were those and, the jockeys? We and, played this game. Well, that's the thing. That's yeah. why it's twisted. Is the jockeys in the setup or the, these cute little big-headed weird-looking characters but then once you get on a horse you're normally yeah, you're it's like guarantee anyone that, that, that goes out and puts any amount of time in this is going to flip out. It's unbelievable. I believe you. I, I really enjoyed game. the first one or the previous one. Yep. We believe you, Tom. Missing you online go. though. I want to see horse racing online. All right. Well now... What do we have next, Tommy? Well, all right, I'd like to introduce a guy right now. Are okay. you ready for this? He's yes. been in the industry as long as I have 14 years. Wow. I know this because we yes. used to work at Virgin together. We started at Virgin together. He was 17 years old when he started in the industry. And uh, I look at, I have an incriminating <laughs> photo of him, Ooh. by the way. I think it's incriminating of we you. I think his orange pants are coming back. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, when are those orange pants coming back? Yeah, um, um, I don't think they're ever coming they're back, Tommy. They're not coming back. Okay. But anyway, please <laughs> welcome a video game <laughs> veteran, <laughs> one of the designers and That's creators cool. of Gex. Nice. And president of Heavy Iron Studio, who just, by the way, finished up working on The Incredibles. Here, here. Mr. Lyle Hall. Making well, a second yes. appearance on TV. Thank you very much. Now, we won't get into the picture, but that... It, <laughs> well, I've seen that picture in 14 that years. That's, you haven't seen that picture in 14 years. No, it was exactly. crazy. You, now, you got in the industry. You were working at, like, Babbage's, right? I was right? working at... Uh, I was in the mall selling video games. Yes, That's I was. That's right. Freak. That's a true That's video awesome. game. But, you know, I, I kind of really want to talk about Incredibles because I did pick it as one of my favorite games at E3. All right. It's awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the making of this game versus the movie. Sure thing. Uh, the Incredible is an action game. It's based on Pixar and Disney's film. Uh, you get to play five player characters, so we've got a tremendous amount of variety. It follows the basic story of the film, but we've been able to add some levels and some environments and some uh, areas to the game that do not appear in the film. So it's a, it's a pretty cool experience if you like the characters, you like the film, if you're a big fan of Pixar content. Okay. I think we made the best game out of a Pixar property that's been made to date, that's for sure. Now, Tadakin from the boards wants to know, can you play as Frozone? And does Samuel Jackson do any voiceovers for sure it? Sure thing. You cannot play uh, directly as Frozone. Frozone is in a huge portion of the game. He's sort of the voice of the game. When you start up the game, you can hear him through all the menus. When you pause the game, he kind of says, hey, don't you want to see Frozone in action? Oh. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was an absolute treat to work with in the, in the, in the, uh, the voiceover stu uh, recording studio. Uh, so you don't get to play him, but you get to hear him throughout the entire game, and you get to see him in, in film footage from the from the movie that's actually in the game, and we also have him in cutscenes that, that we've animated in the game as well. Can right. Rowdy wants to know, uh, any incentives to completing the game multiple times, such as cool modes, characters, or thingies to unlock? We've got a ton of stuff to unlock. We've got some unbelievably cool cheat codes that, that let us sort of tweak the characters or tweak the game experience or tweak uh, how you control the experience. Um, we've got 18 minutes of footage from the film. I believe about five of that is unlockable, so you can only see stuff from the film if you actually go through and you find all the little incredible icons that are right. sprinkled throughout the level, uh, the levels of the game. Uh, we don't have sort of that kind of crazy replayability where you play it eight or nine or ten, fifteen times unless you really like the game that much, which we're hoping that you do. We've spent a lot of time trying to make sure it's a fun game. Uh, but we think that the, the Pixar footage in particular and then some of those really cool cheat codes, we actually have a battle mode on uh, GameCube and PS2 that you can unlock after you beat the, the third boss. We'll see. There you go. Kim yeah. right. Let's take a call. Hey, caller. Hello. Hey, what's your name? Uh, I'm the host. The host? Where are you calling from? No, I'm the oh, host. I'm the host. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Where are you calling from, the host? Illinois. Illinois. Uh, what's your question for Lyle about The Incredibles? Um, I just wondered, I've seen some of the clips of the movie, and it's uh, like very tongue-in-cheek humor. Uh, will the game capture some of the humor of the movie? Uh, definitely. We, we went out of our way to try to pick not only some of the, of the coolest looking scenes from the film, but to, to capture that humor, to take some of the really funny scenes from the film and to inter, inter slice that between the game levels. Uh, we also got the story manager, a guy named Mark Andrews from Pixar, who's a, just an amazingly talented guy. He went over the game script for all the dialogue that we wrote uh, himself just to make sure that the character sounded authentic. So he was able to put all that great humor that he wrote into the script for the, for the film into the script for the game as well. Talk about the sound. The sound <laughs> is freaking awesome. I, 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 don't, I don't know where, where we found these guys. I think Tommy Tallarico uh, Incorporated. Hey, that's right. Hey, listen, Lyle, thank you so much. The game looks like a boatload of fun. And Absolutely. we are out of time. But trust me, you at home, you're not going to want to go anywhere because after this, it's movie time.
Okay, everybody, we are back. And the man who always comes back, it seems like, is John Madden. Boom. Year after year after yes, year. Yes, he does. He sure does. And but as, uh, because of that, we've been covering the EA Sports Madden Challenge for three weeks now. It is a 32-city, 17-week tournament ending in Sin City, Las Vegas, where the winner gets a big, fat, fitty grand. So let's check in with the tour right now. Chase Sparks here for the 2004 EA Sports Man Challenge, where we just brought something new to the tour. Reebok and Champ Sports present the Can You Beat the D-Train competition. Anyone that can come through and beat the legendary D-Train, the number one Madden stunner in our crew, walks away with $1,000. Yeah, one out of two, one out of three. One out of three. Defense win championship. Get ready for it. Challenge. I feel good, I feel good, hey. What can you do about a fumble? It's football, you know what I'm saying? So my man D-Train is still standing strong over here, confident that he's the best Madden player in the nation. So man up, squad up, get your game tight. Go out there and get your thousand dollars, man. All right, thank you, Mr. Sparks. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this new game called The Guy Game. <laughs> yes. It's basically You Don't Know Jack meets Girls Gone Wild. Yes. It's a trivia game, and the better you perform, the more boobs you get to see. If the girls in the game answer incorrectly, <laughs> right. uh, then they got to flash you. So we're going to play a quick round of The Guy Game, and I think it's really only fair yeah. that whoever gets the most wrong has to flash everybody. Yes. Yes, yes. I agree. That's I agree. Cool. All right, let's play. Here we go. Let's play. Good for me. Play some Good trivia. trivia. Hmm. What? Oh, 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 seismic oh, ocean oh, waves? Uh, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, A. Uh, come on, A. Is it the moon's gravity? No, it's earthquake, isn't it? Oh. Darn it. It's earthquake. Is it, is it earthquake? Right. Cause seismic. Here is your question. Oh, man. What causes a seismic ocean wave? Come on, Nora, talk to me. Earthquake? The correct answer is earthquake. You got oh. away from me. All right. You I got, got away from me. I tried to make him do it. Hey, okay, you guys stop clicking back then. <laughs> okay, you're you're we clicking go. by the good part. The great part. man, Miles Davis, is known for playing which instrument? Oh, my God, man. Oh, 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 oh. Tommy T gets the music question. <laughs> Tommy T gets the music question. What's Tommy T get wrong? What, if oh, I get it wrong? No. Right. Yes, yes. This game is retarded. No, okay, here we go. Uh, is she oh, look at her. Right? Don't anyone no. hit the buttons. Okay. I want to see this. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I got to tell you, I got a hard one. Um, all right, the question is, Miles Davis is known for playing what instrument? Hey, she don't know nothing. She doesn't know. She's here we go. A nurse. Oh, I know who that is. You know who that is? What, what instrument does he play? The trumpet. Damn! Oh, she Correct answer is the trumpet, guys. Yeah, I don't know so, what to tell you. Oh, she's jumping up and down, though, anyway. But you wanted to get it wrong, right? Because we only have boobs. one question left. So far, this game has no boobs. But watch yeah, this. this is hey, the game. Watch this. Watch this. Trumpet. I got to be back on top. This game is so hard, guys. No, stop it. <laughs> Speaking of, never All right, mind. last question. Last question. What is the most popular playing piece in a Monopoly game? You both egg. picked egg. So <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just watching what you're pressing, so I don't even have to know the answer. I don't think answer. you can cheat when there's okay. flashing at stake. Okay. I give the game a three. Out of five. Almost All right. Oh, they don't oh know. my favorite. All right, the question is what is the most popular playing piece in a Monopoly game? Yes? Come on, Melissa. Oh. She don't know. She doesn't, she doesn't know. know. Nothing, nothing. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, the horse is incorrect. The race car is the most popular. That's the one everybody likes. But you know what? Ladies, I'm not going to make you flash because they didn't make enough noise last time you did. <laughs> Now you have to flash. Show One, two, the three. Yeah! Show me those Woo! guy game logos. All right, let's check All the right. scores. All right. Because I think I might have hopefully not lost. All right. Let's see. I don't know. It's pretty close. I think Laura's going down. Uh, I think Laura's going down. I think I'm going down. Uh oh. Yep. Woo! Tina's at 72. Tommy's at 68. Oh, oh, oh. This is. Oh! You need to look at Kayla. All right. Tommy, we're out of here.